In this series of videos I'm attempting to repair this Hazeltine 2000 smart terminal. So far in this series I've been through the basic chassis, tested the power supply and I'm now in the process of working my way through the PCBs. So far we've looked at the clock generator, the phase generator, the basic divider and then we looked at the uh, vertical and decoder clock generator circuits. What we're going to look at in this video is the uh, A8 board and this generates the horizontal drive signals and there are quite a few of them. Um, it's not just the horizontal drive for the monitor itself. Uh, we've also got uh, other signals that are used for synchronizing the uh, overall data flow within the system. And we'll come back to those signals later uh, in later videos and explain what each one's for. Um, I'm also hoping in this video that my um, mythology here will become clearer as to why I'm starting uh, with this particular uh, set of circuits. And if we look at the overall system block diagram, so this is the entire system, the bit we're looking at so far is just this block in the bottom left hand corner, which is uh, effectively this. So as you can see, it's quite a complex system, so we have to figure out where to start and um, that's what we've been looking at so far. In the previous video I had reverse engineered the B13 card and that's the one that uh, effectively generates the uh, main signals for the uh, decoding and the overall system operation. And um, it's a 60 Hertz terminal so all the divide ratios are based around uh, providing 60 Hertz refresh for the monitor. So looking back at the um, A8 card, which is the one I've now got plugged into the risers, um, what this should provide is um, a series of, um, they're basically horizontal drive signals, but they include the shift registers for shifting uh, data out into the uh, main data stream for the a CRT display. Um, so we'll see if these are running. We'll also check to make sure we're getting the uh, horizontal sync and drive signal out of this card, which is where it's derived from. And then we'll see if those signals are making it through to the CRT connector. So I'll get this powered up. As usual, I've done the static checks, make sure there are no shorts on the board. So I'll power this up. Okay, so that's powered up and what we'll do now is have a quick look and see if we're getting the expected signals. So we should be seeing um, some data coming through the shift registers. So there are three of these on the board and we'll check all the outputs on these to make sure that the data is being properly shifted. It should all look the same of course. They're all daisy chained so the data is just being shifted through them all. Okay and that looks fine. Um, I have off camera buzzed out the connection through to the CRT uh, connector, the uh, display connector and traced it back to this board. This is for the horizontal output and that is on this particular pin so this should give us the horizontal drive and it should be around 16 kilohertz and it is 15.74 so that is looking quite promising that's giving us the proper expected output. What we can now do is look at the actual connector for the display. So what we should have here are the power rail, that'll be one of the uh, two thick connectors or thick wires and then we should have horizontal drive, vertical drive and then the uh, video signal. So if we look at um, the first one's black so I have buzzed that one out and that is connected to ground and we should have a 60 hertz signal on one of these. And that is indeed 60 hertz and then we should have this one, our 16 kilohertz, that's what's coming from this board, 
and then the other one currently isn't really connected to anything that's the video um, drive to the um, the monitor so the reason I'm going through the boards in this order is uh, hopefully now going to become apparent if we go back to the system block diagram um, notice down here we're getting timing horizontal and vertical drive coming from this block which are the cards that we've so far fitted and these go directly through to the monitor so what we should be able to do now is plug in the monitor and we should be able to get a raster on the monitor uh, because we already have the required uh, horizontal and vertical drive signals we won't get any um, contrasts we won't get any characters or anything displayed we haven't got nearly far enough to do that yet um, but we should still be able to see the uh, monitor coming to life and starting to produce a raster so I get the uh, bench cleared off we'll get the monitor on the bench and I uh, plug this card all the way in it seems to be working so I'll get that plugged in um, I'll recheck the signal to make sure we have no back plane issues and then I'll get this cleared off and get the monitor as you can see I have the monitor dismantled I took it apart it was absolutely filthy it was uh, caked in thick black uh, dust and goo and all sorts the usual sort of stuff you get built up over the years and um, it's worth removing this because uh, it can cause arcing uh, or problems with the tube if you leave it on uh, we're getting a bit of um, uh, flaking off the uh, these uh, magnets here are to uh, give a more linear a display and it's important that you don't remove these and also these are fairly loose so I'm going to put a bit of uh, silicon on these just to make sure they don't drop off uh, also I'm being fairly careful not to move the centering magnets that's these two ears up here I may need to adjust it anyway but they're used to uh, center and uh, properly align the uh, display on the face of the tube the rest of it looks fine and the uh, board I don't know if it works yet we'll test that next um, what I'll do now is get this reassembled there is a lot of screen burn unfortunately on this tube I don't know how clearly this will come across um, but there's uh, a lot of uh, screen burn this is upside down at the moment um, so it uh, may look fairly bad when we get it powered up but um, it is the tube that uh, came with the terminal so it's the one I'm going to be using at least for now if I get it working I may look into replacing the tube um, but for now I just want to see if this one works see if the uh, interface works and deal with any failures um, that uh, may be in that uh, drive circuit assuming this all works um, then what we can do is hook it up to the signal generators do the usual test to make sure that the tube and interface works if that works we'll hook it up to the uh, terminal and uh, see if we can get a raster but uh, first things first I'll get this reassembled and uh, we'll test it with some signal generators as you can see I've got the monitor hooked up to the signal generators I did uh, buzz out the board make sure there were no shorts everything seems fine I do need to replace the PCB mount now the only thing with this uh, tube is I notice on the uh, camera it looks quite bright but in real life it's actually quite dim um, it is getting brighter as I leave it running so possibly it's just not been used for a very long time and the CRT may well recover to a certain extent I have turned the brightness up quite a bit um, but unfortunately the uh, focus is very soft so um, that's usually a sign that the tube might be starting to fail but we'll see if it comes back uh, the other thing is with um, uh, terminal screens is they normally have a fairly low uh, br overall brightness because they're just showing text and quite often they work much better when they're showing text than when you have large blocks like this so what I'll do is I'll leave it running for a while and with any luck the uh, monitor will start to uh, come good it will start, start to improve it's already a lot brighter than it was the I don't know if you can see the kind of background brightness uh, aside from the main bright bars that's how bright it was maximum to start with so it has come up quite a bit and even as I'm speaking it does appear to be getting brighter so 
Um, it's not that uh, uncommon with old CRTs that haven't been used for a while. They can sometimes take a bit of time to come back to life. You can see there's some very bad screen burn on this. It's so bad I can actually read uh, what um, used to be presumably displayed most of the time on this. So the screen burn is actually so bad I can even read the date that's burnt into the screen down here. And um, it's basically saying uh, 79, so possibly that's the last time this was used in anger. And uh, that's over 40 years, so that could explain why the tube is struggling a bit to come back to life. It's also making some noise, you can possibly hear that uh, on the camera microphone. Uh, it's not uh, too bad, just a bit of uh, uh, the usual whine from uh, a monitor like this. Uh, we'll try increasing the frequency of the video we're feeding into it. It's not looking too bad. There's a focus control on the board as well, but I'm not going to mess with that until uh, we've got it in the machine and uh, we're actually displaying text. Um, but it is uh, it's also getting sharper as well. The um, the definition of the bars is getting better as it's left running. So hopefully it is going to be a usable screen. We can see the displays off center. That may well just be because I've got it hooked to signal generators and there's no uh, proper uh, timing and delay at the beginning of each sweep. So again, I'm not going to mess with the settings or the adjustment. I'm just going to leave it running for a while. It's definitely getting brighter as uh, I'm speaking. So it is looking like it might be a usable monitor. Okay, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll hook this up to the terminal and see if the uh, horizontal and vertical drive signals coming from the boards we've put in already are working as they should. I'll still have to feed in some external video just so we've got something on the screen, otherwise it will just be a blank raster. And I'm hoping this is now starting to make sense as to why I took the approach that I did. So we've got in theory at least this part working and this part so what I can now start doing is working my way back I started at the, the back end so to speak I can now start working at the front end and we can start putting the uh, video logic and character generator boards in testing those and then working our way back through memory cursor control and hopefully as we go through all this and add the boards uh, we'll start bringing the overall terminal back to life and we'll deal with any faults uh, as and when we encounter them. It's been running for about an hour now and the brightness has really come up. I've had to turn the brightness down, it was getting too bright. And um, the focus has also improved, it's getting much sharper. I can see the individual uh, horizontal lines now, as before it was just the kind of blurred uh, mess. So I'll leave it running for a while longer and uh, as I say in the next video we'll try hooking it up to the terminal and see um, if it can be driven directly from there.